months because I've been inundated uh, with stories of, from other victims who haven't had the success, if you like, what I've had. It's very rare for a conviction to take place. It's usually about 0.1% of people will get a conviction. So there's so many people out there that haven't had what I've gone through and actually having a conviction, even though what I feel I've gone through is not satisfactory. Mm. Can you remind us how this begun? Because, you know, it starts with a very beautiful story. You buy a nice house in the country, this is going to start renovating, this is going to be a, a, a new phase in your life. Yeah. But it wasn't something that happened in weeks and months. You pretty much got stalked before you even moved in, didn't you? Yes, that's right. Um, I was renovating the house for some time and I was there every day. So it began. And the, the, the thing about stalking is it's, it's, it's not one big thing. It's not like an assault where you're like, wow, this is clear, someone has punched me in the face. It's insidious. Mm. It, it drip, it's a drip, drip effect of all these different behaviours. And it takes you a while as a woman because you're like, Oh, maybe just forgive that. Maybe that's just you well, know, maybe, someone's maybe a bit strange. Maybe you're misinterpreting something. Yeah, yeah, until it becomes clearer. And then I then tried to... I, I recognised over-friendliness, an unhealthy interest in me, noticing things about me, coming in my home, etc. And when boundaries were crossed, I'm like, right. So I then tried to introduce screening measures. I tried to say things to him like, do you know, I'm, I'm kind of... I, I can't talk to you every time I'm outside. I've got a builder inside. I need to be there. So I tried to do everything I could to remedy the situation and create healthy boundaries, but that seemed to actually aggravate how, him. How did he get into your home? That, that must be so frightening. You're in the house, and yeah. suddenly, what, he walks in? Well, he climbed over. There was a wall in the back, so he climbed over. It was a low wall, mm. and, and then they came in through my conservatory. We've seen that in the garden. I had headphones garden. on, yeah, yeah. I had headphones on at the time, um, and uh, I got a bit of a shock, and then he said, you haven't eaten, have you? Um, you, you know, I'll make you a sandwich. No, thank you, I'm OK. And he insisted. Now, it could be viewed as a nice gesture if it was an individual incident, but when you look in the context of a pattern of behaviour... But it's still, it's still the strangest me. of things. And you must have been sort of frightened, but not knowing how to react in yeah. that moment. And there's probably the safest and the best thing to do is just sort of, well, let this pass, maybe it won't happen again. That's what I did. Well, I actually yeah. wrote a thank you card so his partner could read it, cos I felt, this is weird, how do I let her know this has happened? Cos you're not going to phone the police... He's living with a partner. ...someone, yeah at the time, yeah, right. a long-term partner. You're not going to phone the police and say, my neighbour made me a sandwich, you know, but it, it was, there, were, there was other things that occurred, damage to a hedge when I put screening measures up, it became more aggressive and aggressive. The, the greater the boundary I put in, the more I tried to withdraw myself, the angrier he got and the escalation in behaviour. And the difficulty is with these cases, isn't it? It's, it's, as you were saying, it's sort of all those little incidents that you had to piece together a, p a picture, didn't you, to be able to get yeah. support from the police, the criminal justice service. You had to, to fight, in a sense, didn't you, to see this through. And there will be yeah. others out there going through this situation who will be looking at it thinking, well, I don't, I don't know what to do. I don't know how to deal with this when yeah. it happens. And they've been writing and asking me, I'm a crime journalist and I didn't know what to do. I went on to uh, Paladin National Stocking Advocacy. There's lots of other organisations out there, but go on their website and they'll tell you what to do. You have to keep a stocking diary, write the time and date, what happened, importantly, how you feel. And the other thing you have to do is repeatedly phone 101. It's so tedious having to speak to a new person each time, but that's what you have to do. The other thing that they won't necessarily... Sorry, that I learned, you have to video and photograph. If it's in a written word, everything on the charge sheet that I just had written down got thrown out unless you'd videoed it or photographed it and then you get gaslit and accused of stalking them that's what happened to me he called the police on me when I got security cameras put in even though they would told him she's putting in a fence she's putting in cameras leave it alone and it got worse so it is hard did you feel you got enough support from the police during this there were some who were amazing the community police officers I praise them but there was actually the first officer who had the first interaction said Oh, he was nice and polite, and it's a big misunderstanding. That emboldened him, and that police officer actually got taken off the case because he told me at one point he wouldn't be the go-between. That's precisely their job. You should not be confronting your stalker because they could react in a different way. The police are supposed to be there to support you. Mm. But, no, it was very difficult. The CPS wanted to drop the case at one point. Um, you know, it, it's... it's the, the victim is entirely responsible for putting the case together. That's... They won't put in cameras, they won't do digital um, investigations. I, I, I'm absolutely gobsmacked that, 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 as a result of this, he gets 300 hours community service, I don't know what that might be, £715 cost, but he gets to stay where he lives. Mm -hmm. 
and I you can't, can't go back into your own house. I can't even go and pick well, up the Well, you could, but why would you? No, if I phoned the police now and said, hey, I'm going to move back in, they would tell me not to. Would they? They would tell so, me. So, so they're stopping they you from living in your own home because of a situation caused They would caused advise me not to, rather than would be yeah. the correct There's actually no way you could so. do that, is there? I mean, it's not even... Is it a possible... Do you think at some point... No, no. Literally, stalking victims are at risk of being stalked until their stalker dies, essentially. More than 50% reoffend, and they're more likely if there is any mental or personality disorder. And what I would like to see, because I don't think jail's the answer either, put them in a box so they can, you know, get more and more angry over six months to then come out and... Why, why, and... why isn't jail the answer? It's quite a serious Because I think it'll make, of... them, it'll make them more angry. I think that rehabilitation and therapy needs to be... I think they need to come in with a kind of multi-agency approach with social services, with mental health, and I think they should be assessed. The very definition of stalking, obsessive fixated pattern of behaviour, that is a mental disorder. That is not normal, rational behaviour of, of a person. And even when they're told they're warned, they continue. Mm. Even when there's restraining orders, they continue. So I think a lot more needs to be done. Stalking protection orders, that's a new law in England and Wales. They're actually being used against victims, which is what happened to me. They said, his defence agent will question you in court for the civil action. They will then say that you cannot go ahead with criminal mm. proceedings because it would make it an unfair how, trial. What? How? I mean, you know, it's, it's just... The things that you have been through, the fact that you can't live in your own home now just seems staggering. Mm. How does this make you feel now? Because I know it's had such a big impact on yeah. your life, hasn't it? Where do you go from here? Um, uh, therapy. <laughs> it has had a big impact on my life. I definitely have PTSD. I'm triggered of every time I see a van like his, doesn't matter where I am in the country, I look at the last three digits. I had to go and stay in America just to have a break away, stay with my brother to kind of calm down and get some sense of safety. Um, I mean, moving forward for me, apart from my own personal journey, I feel it's important for me to try and help other victims, so I'm happy to do this. But it's also important for me to try and move on. But that means I cannot live in that area. I don't even want to go and visit there for risk of running into him. There is a restraining order, but as you know, facts have shown, history has shown that most um, convicted stalkers will reoffend. Yeah. He doesn't believe he's done anything wrong. The probation report said he doesn't accept he's committed a crime and he has a distorted view of me. That does not fill me with confidence moving mm. forward. It's so, it's so sad. I mean, it so, seems so unjust, you know. I think it doesn't matter what justice you impose on somebody like him, I just feel that there'll never be justice for you because, you know, yeah. you, you're going to have to change your life. And yeah. That's so... The financial impact, um, they did consider imposing some sort of criminal damage, but they said it would be upsetting for me if he paid the minimum amount because it'd be like £10 a week and I'd still have to have a bank account, you know, in, you know an interaction even through bank account would be upsetting for me. Mm. I can't ever get back what he took from me. I'd prefer if he'd robbed me every day because belongings can be replaced. Mm. You cannot replace your sense of self, your sense of safety. My ability to try and experience joy or feel carefree, they are gone. They're yeah. stolen from okay. you. Oh, listen, I'm so sorry, but thank you so much for coming in for talking about so it. Important. You know, there'll be so other people important. who are going, sadly, going through similar situations, um, yeah. but, you know, you've... You'll have given them advice and, and help and the support that, that, you know, there is a way through this. So thank you for having me. Thanks very much. Uh, now, a spokesman...